Hello everybody, this is Janneke Oines from Wisdom from North. I'm back live at the Wellbeing Festival and I'm sitting here with Kyle Gray. I'm so excited about that. He just did a yoga class and it's so sporty of you just to show up here. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Yeah. And uh, you're quite the angel expert and <laughs> you're coming from Scotland and you've had talks there, you had yoga classes and you spoke a little bit about knowing your angels. Mm -hmm. So let us start by the basic actually. Do we all have angels around us? Yeah, I, I really have this belief that everyone has an angel, no one has been forgotten. Um, but I have a really different idea on what an angel is. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing I'm trying to share right now is we have this preconceived idea of what an angel looks like or what it should look like or what it should be. Um, but an, an angel for me doesn't have to be something that has wings or feathers. It can also just be a good person in your life. It can be oh, a human being. It could be uh, an angel can be a thought of inspiration. An angel can be that moment you decide to do something that heals you, uh, you know, it, they aren't just one thing, right? And I think that's really important. We, we seem to think an angel is like this, this being that's from another world. Um, but but I've, I've started to see angels in a very different way in the last few years. So isn't it a specific being? I mean, it, can it be just different energies you're yeah, saying? I, that's what I'm saying, yeah. And uh, an angel for me is, is divine energy that has no form, no form, no, no form. It has form? form, it has no physical embodiment. Oh, form. form. It, it, it just can, can be an, an air of inspiration. It can be a being, okay. but, but it doesn't have to be limited to that, right? So um, A Course in Miracles is my, my spiritual practice, and the, the Course defines an angel as a thought of God, right? And I've, I've kind of put my own spin on that. I would like to imagine the universe was this gigantic big heart, right? And every time the universe's heart was to beat, the beat would be an angel. And so when every time someone says to me, how can you see angels and I can't, I always say to them, well, stop looking outside yourself. The angels are actually within us. They're around us, they're part of life itself. And if we look at it from that perspective, we have a greater opportunity of really seeing one. So how can I, for instance, look within myself and connect with angels? So I think um, the one thing I always say is, how could we hear an angel if we can't hear ourselves? right? So I, I really believe that spending time and effort and energy on really listening to our own feelings and really feeling how we feel, good or bad, I think then we have the capacity to know if there's something channeling through us or a wave of inspiration is coming in, you know. So I really like to think angels like that heartbeat of God or the thought of God, it's, they, they come in inspirational waves of information or it can be really insight. So what about like guardian angels and stuff like that? Do we have like some specific uh, angels yeah, that are with us? I mean, angels are just energy, right? So they will manifest themselves to you in a way that you'll maybe understand them as an angel. But what I'm just trying to say is, we have such an idea of an angel should be a being behind us or out there or coming in from another realm. And I think that makes angels really hard to grasp. You know, it can make them feel too far away from us. And so I've been trying to encourage people to see that their guardian angel's love is actually in their heart inside of us because if the universe is all one and we are all connected to each other through that oneness, we are also already connected to our angels through that oneness. And so I constantly encourage people to stop looking outside themselves for the angel because their love is already inside. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh my mind is still like into the categorizing here. Uh, right. Yeah, because we have the higher self, right? Like we're connected to the higher self. But would an angel kind of blend into the higher self or would it be something exterior to the higher self? Well, you know, the Western mystery tradition um, actually believes the higher self and the angel are the same thing. Oh. And uh, and I'm, I'm here saying, well, for me, it, the higher self is one with the universe, so the angel and the higher self could be the same thing. 
and and I I'm into the questioning of that right now, you know, because I I feel like when it comes to angels, people always say have a very open mind, right? And then great teachers who are interested in angels always say angels are this one thing. That's not an open mind. Angels find ways to speak to us. They'll find ways to send us messages, and maybe that is through the higher self. Maybe that is through the finding of a feather or meeting a, a person that inspires us through a loving action, you know. And, and that, that's what I like to say is be open when it comes to angels because they can show up in many ways, many synchronicities, and we can't just limit them to this holy figure behind us. Oh, I love synchronicity, so that can be an angel that help an too. Angel. That is an angel, you know. I just said in my talk that I experienced so many synchronicities and that makes it so much more magical, I feel like, right. when it's knowing it's angels. A synchronicity for me is the universe telling you that you're doing it right, you know, or, or your angels telling you that you're doing it right. But, you know, synchronicities, you know, show up when we are aligned with our truth, when we are, we, are, we are on the path. And so people always say, you know, angels, show me a sign that I know I'm on the right path. You'll not need to ask for that because you'll see them already. Thank you so much for that because I went to India and then ta they taught us that the more synchronicities you notice, the more they become and then they become miracles. Mm -hmm. And I started paying attention to all the synchronicities and they became more and more. And I always feel like, oh, I'm so connected when I experience them. I get this like, yes. <laughs> you know what's even more exciting? When you become someone's synchronicity. Okay, how, how so? How would that For happen? For example, maybe you have a conversation with someone you've never met and you tell them something like, oh my God, I was just talking about that. You know, and that's, that's one of the things that I really love about angels and all these things is we don't realize when we are being the angel. Yeah, that, that's what you meant in the beginning in a way. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. You know, like when we come, al come across someone and we share something loving with them or, or are there to help someone when they really needed a, a hand, and so one of the things that I've, I've been trying to do in my own life is be the angel. Now, one of the things I always love to share about angels is in spiritual text, when they're spoken about in the Bible and the Kabbalah, they've never always been seen as gentle beings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're ferocious. Sometimes they're strong-willed and fiery and they are you know, outspoken and they say when they don't believe in something. Sometimes that's being an angel too. So, you know, sometimes you're being an angel for someone when you tell them the truth they need to hear. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, and I think that's a big deal, yes. you know. So when I say to people, if you want to experience angels, be the angel. Mm. But knowing being the angel is actually just finding integrity in every moment. So tell us, uh, can you give some examples of some experience you've had with okay. angels? So I think it's cool to say that that's me speaking about angels and the way to try and connect with them. But I've also been very lucky to have these moments in my own experience where I've physically seen angels or I've seen like a manifestation of energy that feels like an angel. And I've also been really lucky to give messages to people who are really needing that support. And anytime I've ever seen an angel, the one thing I've really loved about them, I see them as these very much beings of light, you know, just pure light. And the have the, I, I always see them with these really black eyes that look like the night sky. Black eyes? Eyes, yeah, it's like the night sky. Not dark oh, and scary, okay. but like black as in the night sky, you know? And, um, but these eyes are so loving. And one of the things that I've always found about angels is they make us feel naked in the sense where they see everything. There is nothing we can hide from them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so one of the things that I do when I'm teaching angel workshops is I teach people to look into each other's eyes and really look into their eyes. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of you that wants to smile or yeah, do yeah, this yeah. and hide because we really don't want to be seen right yeah and the more we get used to being really seen like really seen the more we give permission to the angels to see us to okay. does that make sense it's all connected yeah it's all connected so but one of the things i've also seen is my favorite story i've been telling for a while now is a woman came to me for 
a session and I used to do private sessions and I had like a three year wait list and she got to the front of the list and she didn't want a reading, she just wanted me to to give some Reiki to her. And I really believe that we are our own healers, you know, I, I really believe that. And then um, I held her hands and I closed my eyes and I seen her angels. And um, they looked at her and they seen her through the, these deep loving eyes of pure acceptance. And they seen her as whole, they seen her as healed and they seen her as complete. And I told her that. And she said, well, right now I have lymphoma cancer, you know, I am not healed. And, I'm, and I said, no, your angels are holding you in the vision that you are healed, that one day you might join them in that thinking and heal your life. So even when we feel broken, even when we feel lost, the angels hold us in a pure vision of grace that we will one day join them in their thinking and in that thinking, I really believe that's when we can heal ourselves, And that really inspires me. Wow, but is that possible as a human being to manage to uh, keep that vision? I don't think that's easy, um, but I think that's also why we're here, right? What's the point of coming to Earth and having a really, you know, easy experience? We're here to learn, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we'd like to make things easy for ourselves. But I, I really love that the angels hold a vision of hope for us, you know, and they, they try and see our greatest potential in us. And, and it, it really holds the space for us to maybe find that potential too, you know. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. And enjoy Norway. I know you're going to see the Viking Museum and explore Oslo. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait. I'm going to gonna have a great time here. Yeah. And it's snowing. I know, it's just, it just started snowing. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Cheers. And thank you for watching, guys. And we will be back with more. And uh, remember to take a trip here if you're in the area. There's lots and lots to see. Bye-bye.